Hello, it's me, Michael Tic Tac, and welcome back to another video. Well, unless this is your first video, um, then welcome to the, uh, Ch channel, I guess. Yeah, I'm pretty bad at intros. All right, let's talk about cats. These four-legged felines are some of the most feared creatures in the animal kingdom and arguably even more feared in the average household. And with some of the best Pokemon out there being cats, I can see why you guys voted for this to be my next run. As usual, here are the Nuzlocke rules that I'll be using while playing through this. And while we're at it, let's ban setup moves as well. Director Clavel throws out our starter options and for the first time in a while, I can actually use one of them. Yep, we pick up the grass cat Sprigatito and give him the name Garfield. We arrive at the gates of Mesagoza with our lasagna loving friend and Nimona decides she wants to have a quick battle. Garfield deals with the Quaxley swiftly with back to back leafages and then she brings in her Pormi who does hit us with terrestrialized thundershocks but a couple of leafages can get the job done beating Nimona. Mesagoza is bustling with life and people although some of the residents here do seem a little dodgy. Your phone can reveal your past lives to me. Yeah, I'm gonna have to pass on that offer, lady. It is also a mess of Goza when Nimona gives us access to terrestrialization, but we're gonna ban that also. Oh look, it's Arvin. You've gotta help me out so I can make my dream a reality. Yeah, you're gonna have to tell me more about this dream first, big dog. And it turns out he just wants us to slay a bunch of Titan Pokemon, giving us the Path of Legends questline. Nimona then asks us to defeat every gym leader in Paldea, which is the Victory Road questline. And then finally, Cassiopeia hacks my phone, giving me the location of every team side base she wants me to raid, the Starfall Street questline. Now that we have all our tasks, we can start things off by taking on Katie and her bugs, but there's a small problem. You see, Garfield hates bugs almost as much as he hates Mondays. So we're gonna need to add another feline to the squad. Conveniently, I just so happen to have an egg in my possession, and let's just say, this ain't no ordinary egg. So let's hatch it. Yes, this is a shiny litten, and yes, it looks amazing. This shiny kitten has an adamant nature, which is perfect, and it has its hidden ability, Intimidate, which will come in handy. Welcome to the team, Felix. Before we take on Katie, we do some quick preparations to make sure the fight goes smoothly. First thing we do is go shopping, buying a charcoal, which will boost fire attacks. Then we kill some hound doors, getting some of its fangs, which can then be used to make the fire fang TM. And now, we're ready for Katie. Katie brings out Nimble, and one fire fang from Felix burns it to a crisp. Tarantula is next to be exterminated as a fire fang can end the spider. Last is Tertiosa and the bear can just survive an incoming fire fang and then retaliates with some fury swipes. Okay, that was too close for comfort. You die now. The Stony Cliff Titan Cloth is next on our agenda, although before we do play the Giant Crab a visit, we sneak up on this Shinx here, catch it, and give her the name Gigi. And in case you're wondering, that's the name of my cat that I adopted a few years ago. Garfield can also evolve right before we take on Cloth, which is exactly what we needed. The Giant Crab doesn't stand a chance, and a couple of magical leaves from our Grass Cat can end the first phase. Arvin then comes along, and in the second phase, some magical leaves and water guns is all it takes to slay the first Titan Pokemon of the game. We go inside the cave, get some magic herbs, and then grab a photo together. Artisan City is the home of Brassius and his plant Pokemon, who is also holding another gym badge that I want. So after collecting a bunch of some floras, we enter the gym, watch him jump off a windmill, and then start the battle. Felix is the star of this battle, taking out the petty level with a single Fire Fang. Smolov comes in next, but it's hopeless as another Fire Fang can end the olive. Sudowoodo is a different story as it knows Rock Slide, so I switch in Gigi, oh yeah, she evolved by the way, who can intimidate the fake tree, dropping its attack while taking a trial blaze. Felix and Takes his way back in, dropping its attack even further, and then takes a few fiery bites at the tree, sending it straight back to Brassius. Hey, just quickly, I wanted to pause the video to thank you all for the support you've been showing. And if you have been enjoying the videos I've been putting out, I'd love if you could like the video and subscribe to the channel. Thank you. Okay, it's about time we add another team member. So back to Contondo Fields we go, and we can sneak up on this Eevee. Um, okay, where did you come from, mate? See ya. Oh, of course, you have arena trap. Let's see your arena trap this, mate. Thankfully, the Eevee is still here and we can catch it. Okay, let's play a game. See if you can guess which Eevee evolution I'm going to use while it's evolving. 
As you can see, I went with Sylveon, mainly because it's a fairy type and will be the most useful for the next two big fights coming up against a Bombardier and then Giacomo. Welcome to the team, Tom. Just outside Arazon City, we can grab the TM for Draining Kiss and now we can make our way to the next Titan. We scale up the mountain, dodge some boulders, reach the top and then stare down the giant bird starting the battle. Bombardier goes for a rock throw, which hurts a little, but a Draining Kiss from Tom deals big damage back while healing us up. We take another rock throw, but it's fine as we can take out the giant bird with a second draining kiss. The plan doesn't change in the second phase and we just keep dealing damage with draining kisses while healing up until eventually the bombardier has had enough and it falls. We get some more herbs, grab another photo together and have a sandwich. Although this one looks pretty bad. Team Star is finally on the hit list and it's Giacomo and his dark types that we want to deal with first. He leads with Pornide and because of his defiant ability, I don't want to lead with Felix as if we intimidate it, it will actually boost his attack. So Garfield leads, going for a quad effective low kick, doing huge damage, but a critical hit air release hits us back just as hard. Garfield then goes for a second low kick, taking out the Pornide, which means now the Starmable enters the frame. We are way too low to stay in fight, so Felix comes in, intimidates the car, lowering its attack and then double kicks the car a of times before he gets too low on health himself. Gigi can then tag in, but she's only there to intimidate the car further before Tom can come in himself and start draining kissing the car, and after a few turns, we have literally kissed the car to its death. What a way to go out, huh? And with that, we defeated Giacomo and his base. Levencia City is home to the popular streamer Iono, who also holds the electric gym badge, so naturally, we make our way there. But things are never that simple, as Nimona decides that she wants a gate crash and forces us into another battle. Garfield starts, one shot on the rock rock with a super effective seed bomb, then it's Bormi who gets taken out with a big seed bomb, and then finally it's the duck who surprisingly survives a super effective seed bomb while also hitting us back insanely hard with a wing attack, but it means nothing as a second seed bomb ends its life. Before we do actually take on the stream, in a battle, we quickly pop over to the shops and get a covert cloak, which will stop us from getting paralyzed from the sparks. Wartrell is our first Pokemon, but a couple of Fire Fangs can send the bird to an early grave. Iona brings in Belly Bolt, so Gigi comes in and can start biting the frog over and over until we are brought down to low health. From here, Garfield can come in and finish up the frog with a seed bomb. Iona brings in her own Luxio, and I decide to switch in Felix, who can intimidate it and then take it out with a couple of Fire Fangs. Her last Pokemon is her Levitating Miss Magius, who has no weakness is once terrestrializing, but I can counter that with Tom, who can take hexes on the switch, but with protected leftovers and draining kisses, we're dealing enough damage to the electric ghost while staying healthy, allowing us to outlast Iona's ace and get the win. It's at this point of the run where we need to pay another visit to Team Star with Mela and her fire crew being our next target. To make this fight as easy as possible, we grab the Rain Dance TM, which is just outside the base, and then we can go in and start the raid. Eventually, Mela does come out of hiding and she's raring to go. Torgal comes out and can set up the sun with his drought ability, but the sun is short-lived as Tom goes for a Rain Dance, summoning the rain. Torgal then goes for a Flame Ball, which not only does pathetic damage to us, but our cute charm activates and the turtle is now in love with our cat. From from here we just go for mud slap, dealing small damage but dropping the Torkoal's accuracy multiple times and between being in love and just missing his moves, we can comfortably defeat the turtle. Melo now brings in the Starmobile and we just keep going for mud slaps which barely do any damage but it's still useful as we're dropping its accuracy. We do run out of PP so Gigi can come in and start thunderbolting the Starmobile a few times before it's had enough and it falls apart. The lurking still tight in Autumn has been causing havoc, so we're given the contract to eliminate it. We get our hands on the TM for Flamethrower, as Autumn's defense is so high that Fire Fangs won't hurt it too much. We then track it down, and we take it on. As expected, even in the rain, Flamethrowers from Felix deal insane damage to the Titan on both phases, and it doesn't take long for our shiny cat to get the better of the Earthworm, taking it out. As usual, we get some herbs, Ivan makes us a sandwich, and of course, we get another photo together. The level gap has now gone up to 30, which is fantastic as this means our girl Gigi can evolve into her final evolution, Luxray. And with the water gym leader Kofi being our next target, the timing couldn't be better. We arrive at Kaskarifa and we spend some time tracking down Kofu as he's always on the move, but eventually we get a hold of him and we go face to face for a battle. Gigi starts things off and a big spark from our cat can one shot the Veluza. Well, Trio comes in and heads back Gigi, but we don't flinch and a spark can end its life, although we do get our speed drop from Gooey. Last is his crab abominable, and a terrestrialized crab hammer does insane damage to Gigi, but we hold on and deal big damage back with a spark while getting the paralysis. Because of the paralysis, we can now outspeed and take out the crab with a second spark. 
Our next target is Atticus and his poison crew from Team Star, and I have a plan to be able to deal with him pretty easily. First things first, we need to go back to school and do some lessons. But Michael, we don't care about any of the school stuff. Why are you doing this? Yes, I know, I know, but you're gonna have to trust me on this. So back to Mezagoza we go, and we enroll in the languages class, where we can complete all the lessons they have, until Mr. Salvatore's face is now shown in different areas at the academy. Now we just need to stalk the guy all over the school, and then I realized that I actually need six gym badges in order to get what I was looking for. Okay, time for a new plan. We head to Leventia City, and up here we can grab the TM for Psychic Fangs. Then it's another TM we want, this time being D. On the way to the poison base, we do run into a regular Meowth, so we catch that cat and give her the name Duchess. Duchess isn't a Meowth for long though, as at level 28, she can become a Persian, and with a technician ability, stab fake outs will do some pretty big damage. One last thing I do is look for another TM, getting ourselves body slammed, Another big stab move for our newest cat. Okay, maybe I lied. The last thing I actually do is buy a silk scarf from the Deli Bird store to make our normal moves even stronger. Atticus comes out, does a backflip, and then we start the battle. Duchess can fake out the skunk tank, and with technician, stab, silk scarf, and adamant nature, it does massive damage. The skunk flinches, and then we finish it off in the next turn with a body slam. Muck is next, so we go for a dig, allowing us to dodge the sludge wave in the first turn, before doing big damage with a hit on the next turn, while taking a sludge wave, which does kinda hurt. A second dig can get the job done, and now in comes Reverune. Duchess is too fast for the car, and a quad effective dig can dodge the iron head, and then land on the next turn, getting the kill. Finally, it's the Starmobile, who does land a Noxious Torque on Duchess, while poisoning her. We'd already committed to the dig, so we do go underground, dodging another Noxious talk and then we hit the Starmobile for decent damage before our gracious cat falls to the poison damage. I'm sorry Duchess, I couldn't even keep you alive for one fight. Felix comes in, getting poison from the toxic spikes, but can intimidate the car, reducing the damage of a Noxious Talk. Felix then can get off a couple of flamethrowers on the Starmobile before getting low on health himself and needing to be switched out. Gigi makes her way in, and she can intimidate the car a second time and can take a Noxious Talk well. Then back to back psychic fangs from our Lux Raids enough to end the car and get the win. We pay our respects to Duchess by putting her in the box rather than releasing her, and now we can move on. It's not all bad news though, as with the new level cap, Garfield can now evolve into a Miascata, and even more excitingly, Felix can now evolve, becoming one of my favorite shinies, Incineroar. Now that a couple of our cats are standing on two feet, we can acquire a very useful TM that is perfect for our next gym battle, Drain Punch. We also purchased an expert belt to boost the damage, and now we're ready to take on Larry. Felix is in charge, and one Drain Punch from our cat can eliminate the Koala from the fight. The Dunspice jumps in, so in comes Garfield, who does get glared and paralyzed. I decide to bring Tom in now, who can take a Hyper Drill as he comes in. Tom kisses at the Dunspice, dealing some damage and healing some health, before the Thick Snake goes for a glare, paralyzing us. We land a second Draining Kiss, but now we're too low to stay in, so Felix returns, getting off the Intimidate, and then takes a Hyper Drill well. Our cat then Drain Punches the to Dunsparce, securing the KO, and healing himself up. Larry gets serious as he brings in his Staraptor, who can drop my attack with Intimidate, so I hard switch in Gigi, who can intimidate the Staraptor back while taking a facade for minimal damage. A second facade does bring us low, so we go for a spike on the Staraptor, before Felix makes another return, getting the Intimidate off, and then taking a facade with ease. And then with two Drain Punches later, we can crush the bird, officially defeating Larry. Straight after this, Nomona does challenge us, but she really isn't that much of a threat. Lycanroc can accelerate Felix for decent damage, but a Drain Punch can deal with her wolf. Gumi comes in, but a Darkest Lariat can end the baby dragon. Now it's Pormo, and a couple more Darkest Lariats take it out. Last is Quackerville, so Garfield hard switches in, taking an Aqua Step well, and then a critical hit Aero Slash almost kills me. But it doesn't, so we Flower Trick the Duck, and we defeat Nimona. Before we continue our gym challenge and take on Rhyme, there is another encounter we can use. Just outside Artisan City, there is a tiny Litleo who we can catch and give the name Nala. But she ain't a Litleo for long, as at level 35, she can be become a powerful pyro. And because we have the ghost gym battle coming up, we go on a little adventure, obtaining the TM for Dark Pulse. We arrive at Monte Nevera, and the snowstorm is raging at the moment. Well, unless I decide to pose for a photo, that is. All right, now it's rhyme time. Yeah, I know. 
I'm a lyrical genius. Nala and Felix start the fight against Rhyme, getting the Intimidate off, dropping Burnett and Mimikyu's attack stat. Nala goes for a Dark Pulse on the Mimikyu, which can break its disguise, while the Ghost goes for a Light Screen. Felix then hits a Burnett with a Darkest Lariat, getting our first kill. Houndstone replaces the Burnett, coming in, and the crowd goes wild, raising our attack stats. Now a Dark Pulse from Nala damages the Mimikyu, while the Mimikyu slashes back at Nala. Felix then goes for a Darkest Lariat on the Houndstone, eliminating the dog. This time Nala can take out the Mimikyu with a flame thrower and Felix can deal with the toxicity, giving us a pretty stress-free gym win. Speaking of stress-free gym wins, the Great Tusk is our next target and Garfield can toy around with the Ancient Don fan with a couple of flower tricks. In the second phase, Ivan Scorvillian gets involved, hitting it with razor leaves, but Garfield lands a finishing blow with a flower trick and the Titan has been taken care of. Our sights are firmly set on Tulip, so we enter the gym and... Oh, great. Nimona wants another beatdown. Let's get this over with. Lycanroc, flower tricked. Sligo, drain kissed. Pormont, flower tricked. And finally, Quackerville, flower tricked. Okay, let's take on Tulip. To be fair, this wasn't much harder. Felix starts a fight, and a darkest lariat destroys a Farigarath. Gardevoir is next, so I switch in Tom, who takes a dazzling gleam well, then a psychic, before going for a shadow ball, getting the KO. Tulip then brings in Espartha, so this time Garfield comes back in for free, as we're immune to psychic, and then goes for a night slash, taking out the emu. Lysis of Florges, who terrestrializes into a psychic type, meaning a night slash is now super effective, and we can get the kill on the flower. Our adventure now takes us back to the snowy mountains as this is where Grusha, the last gym leader, is located. And because she's a nice type user... Wait, are you, are you sure about that? Right. Ladies and gentlemen, I've just been advised that Grusha is in fact not a she, but a he. Well, this battle just got awkward. Nala gets some love and a charcoal boosted flamethrower can melt Grusha's frost moth in one hit. Grusha then brings in a polar bear, but Nala isn't phased and flamethrowers it to its grave. See, Titan is a much thicker boy, so in comes Garfield to take the expected liquidation and then U turns out of there, bringing in Felix, who can get off the Intimidate before taking an Ice Spinner with ease. Garfield comes back in, eating a liquidation, then U turns again, although this time it's Nala that makes a return, taking minimal damage from an Ice Spinner before a flamethrower melts a snowball into a puddle. Last is his Altaria, who makes itself weaker by terrestrializing into an Ice type, but somehow this thing still just barely survives a flamethrower, which allows it to hit us back with an insane hurricane, almost taking us out. Thankfully, Nala does survive the hurricane, and one more flamethrower gets the job done. Now, remember after the Kofu battle, I was talking about getting an encounter, only to find out that I didn't have enough gym badges? Well, let's go back to school and finish that. We complete the last few classes before taking the final exam, which is also pretty easy. I mean, come on, what's your teacher's name? Really? Anyway, with that done, we follow Mr. Salvatore around, and after helping out the poor me, he gives us a Galarian Meowth. And yes, I'm aware that I'm technically breaking the species clause by using this guy, as I already caught a Meowth. But if you rewind all the way back to the rules of this video, and then zoom in right about here, it clearly says that I'm allowed to use a Perserker as an exception to the rules. We give our newest cat the name Sylvester, and the first thing we do is evolve it into a Perserker. And the timing couldn't be any better for this, as Ortega and his fairy base crew are our next victims. But before we raid the base, we do some shopping and purchase a clear amulet, which stops Pokemon from dropping our stats in battle. We arrive at the base, then we warm up on some of the grunts until Ortega has seen enough and comes out to face us. Sylvester does start, and a fake out does a nice chunk of damage on the Azumarill whilst flinching it. Azumarill then goes for an Aquatel, which does hurt a bit, while a trial place from Sylvester brings a rabbit on the brink of death while raising our speed. On the next one, we can now outspeed and get the KO with a second trial blaze. Ortega notices we have cats, so he brings in a dog to try and stop us. The dash bun goes for a baby doll eyes, but thanks to the clear amulet, we aren't affected, and then an iron head can take it out. Wigglytuff does come in next, but it leaves just as quickly as a single iron head from Sylvester destroys it. Ortega is getting desperate now, using the Starmobile to fight us, going for a magical talk, barely hurting Sylvester. Meanwhile, an iron head from us hits hard. Then it goes for a steel roller, but it's not a problem, as we respond with another big iron head. The Starmobile makes one last attempt with a magical talk, but Sylvester is just too strong and goes for one final iron head, obliterating the car and getting the win. 
Okay, pop quiz time, everyone. What do cats like to eat? Well, I guess there's more than one answer to that question, isn't there? But for the sake of my video, let's just go with the answer, fish. And with the false dragon titan coming up, they don't get much bigger than a Dodonzo. Gigi goes for a spark, bringing the titan below half its health, while a water pulse is nothing more than an inconvenience. But cats don't like getting wet, so Gigi punishes the giant fish with a second spark. The Dodonzo does try its best to escape, but we aren't in a forgiving mood as we chase it down to start the second phase. Gigi then continues where she left off, and between her and the Greedon, we can deal with the Dondonzo in a matter of a few turns. Now it's the Tatsugiri who wants a piece of the action, and Gigi just continues to spark the cat food for a few turns before she gets low. From here, Tom can tag in, and back-to-back -back super effective Moonblast is enough to finish off the last Titan of the game. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we have but just one more task to complete before we can take on the end game, and that is to defeat Eerie and her fighting type crew. And with no preparations needed, we jump straight into battle. Tom takes a lead and almost instantly dies from a super effective poison jab, and yet yeah, that would have been awkward. But Tom doesn't die, unlike the Toxicroak, who is eliminated from existence from a psychic. Eerie then brings in Passy Man, and this time I do a quick speed calculation to make sure we do outspeed before landing a draining kiss, which does great damage and even heals us. Up. The monkey goes for a seed bomb, which we take well, before kissing it a second time, getting the kill, and recovering more health. Now it's Annihilate who makes an appearance, and this monkey can outspeed and go for an insane close combat that crits, leaving Tom on just 7 HP. A draining kiss is not quite enough to end the monkey, but it recovers a nice amount of HP back. This time we are hit with a Rage Fist, which almost kills Tom again, but we survive, and a second draining kiss will end Annihilate. Lucario is not much of a threat, as its Aura Spheres do minimal damage, allowing Tom to slowly take it out with Draining kisses. Eerie has no choice but to bring in a Starmobile, who wastes no time going for a shift gear, raising its speed and attack, while Tom gives Akara a kiss, doing just over one third of damage. With its boosted attack, a spin out hits Tom hard, but a draining kiss will bring the car to its knees while keeping us healthy. Then, from out of nowhere, a huge spin out leaves Tom on just one HP. And at this point, if cats have nine lives, Tom is getting dangerously close to running out. One more draining kiss can seal the victory of the Starmobile, putting an end to the final Team Star base. And now, the time has finally come to test our might against some of the strongest trainers in the land, the Elite Four. Starting things off is the ground specialist Rika, so we let Garfield take the lead. Rika brings in Wish Cash and one flower trick from our grassy feline was probably enough to KO this thing twice. Camera up comes in and not wanting to deal with that, we U-turn out of there bringing in Felix who can take a fire blast before crushing the camel with a big earthquake. Rika then brings in Don Fan so Garfield can come back in taking a stone edge. Now because this thing has sturdy, we go for a U-turn which breaks the sturdy and allows Sylvester to come in for free as he's immune to the incoming poison jab. Then Expecting an earthquake, we hard switch Garfield back in so he can eat the hit well before flower tricking the elephant to its grave. Now it's Doug Trio, but we're just too fast for it, and a flower trick sends it packing. Last is our ace Clodzar, who would have had a chance if it didn't trestalize, but it does, so a single flower trick gets the job done. At this point, we're giving babysitting duties as the toddler Poppy comes in next. She leads with a copperaja, which is perfect as Nala can flamethrow their elephant into a puddle. Poppy brings in Bronzong, who shares the same fate, falling to a flamethrower. Then it's Corvonite, who likes like the others, never stood a chance surviving a flamethrower. Magnazone does have sturdy, so it will survive a flamethrower, then it sets up a light screen, weakening my special attacks. Not liking this, Felix comes in taking a discharge before a flame charge can get the kill while raising his speed. Finally, it's a Tinkerton, but her fairy wielding a hammer gets crushed by an earthquake from Felix, securing another victory. Our next challenger is none other than Larry, who has ditched the normal types and has gone with flying types for this battle. Nala's in charge again, and she starts things off by burning the Tropius to a crisp with a flame Seraptor makes an appearance now, so expecting a close combat, Tom can come in and take the hit. Then we hard switch in Gigi to get the Intimidate off and eat a Brave Bird with ease. Gigi stays in, surviving a close combat before sparking the Seraptor to its death. Altaria is next, so Tom comes back in for free as the Dragon Pulse doesn't affect us. Then Tom can land a huge Moon Blast, eliminating the cloud. Or Ikorio does confuse Tom with a Teeter Dance, but we're just too focused as a critical hit Moon Blast from our Fairy Cat can get the kill. Larry brings in his Flamingo, and this bird decides to go for a not very effective throat chop while we hit it back with a draining kiss. And then for some reason it just goes for another throat chop, which doesn't make sense, but it doesn't matter as we go for a moon blast, which destroys a flamingo, getting us the win. Our final test is against the Dragon Master Hassle, and we waste no time starting the battle. Noivin lands a super fang on Tom, doing exactly half our HP, but our cute calm activates and it falls in love with me. Tom then goes for a draining kiss, almost taking it out while healing us back up. Noivin is immobilized by love, so we can take it out on the next turn with a second draining kiss. Dragalki is a problem for Tom, 
Tom. So if Sylvester comes in, who is immune to the sludge bomb. Then we hit it with a fake out, getting the flinch, before going for a dig, getting the KO. Haxorus is next, and wanting to drop its attack, Felix can come in and get the Intimidate off while being crunched. Then Sylvester comes back in, taking a rock tomb with ease, and then goes for a fake out on the following turn. Haxorus then crunches Sylvester, but it doesn't hurt too much, while an Iron Head leaves a Haxorus on the brink of death. We take one more crunch from the dragon, before a second Iron Head can send it straight back to Hassle. Flapple now comes in, but I misclick and bring in Garfield by mistake. Thankfully, the Dragon Rush doesn't get the kill, and we can U-turn out of there, dealing big damage while bringing in Felix, who can take the Dragon Rush well after an Intimidate. One Darkest Lariat later, and the Apple Dragon is eliminated from the field. Hassle is getting serious, and in comes his Baxcalibur, and not wanting to deal with that, I can bring in the perfect counter, Tom. No point in letting this drag on. Behold, the power to overwhelm everything. Well, that's kind of embarrassing now, isn't it, Hassle? Tom can then go for a couple of draining kisses, which can put an end to the Baxcalibur and the final member, Hassle. And now that we've beaten these four chumps, we can make our way outside to take on the final test, Gita. Garfield takes the stage, and one Night Slash from our cat can take care of Gita's emu, Espartha. Gagoda's next, so we go for a U-turn, which honestly did a lot more damage than expected. Because of this, I decided to bring in Tom, who watches the goat go for a bulk up as he switches in. Then on the next turn, Tom can moonblast this thing straight to its face. As expected, King Gambit drops in, which is perfect, as now Felix can come in, getting off the Intimidate, dropping its attack, before being tickled from an Iron Head. From here, Felix can unleash a quite effective Drain Punch, destroying the King Gambit. Gita then brings an Avalug, and a super effective Drain Punch doesn't deal that much damage, while a Body Press brings Felix below half health. I switch in Tom as he resists the Body Press, but of course, this time it goes for an Earthquake. Tom stays in, and almost takes out the Iceberg with a Drain and Kiss, all while healing us back up, before an Earthquake brings us to about half health again. We then give it one more Kiss, ending its life, and forcing Gita to bring in the Loser. Garfield is now the perfect counter, as it takes a Liquidation on the Switch, before ending the Fish's life with a big Flower Trick. Gita then brings in a final Pokemon, Glamora, who does us a favor by terrestrializing, meaning a flower trick is now super effective and can easily one-shot the rocky flower. And with that, we have now beaten Gita and become a champion ranked trainer. But don't go anywhere just yet, as Gita was just the warm-up for the true final battle we have coming up. First things first, we meet up with Arvin at the lighthouse, where we can confirm that his mum needs our help. Then we battle Arvin, and we can deal with him and his mob boss Steph with no trouble at all. Director Clavel is our next target, and we can defeat him and his skelly dirge comfortably at the academy entrance. Penny then reveals that she's Cassiopeia, so we give her and our Sylveon a beat down also. Last night, this is our final battle with Nimona, and well, just like the fights before, she takes another L from us. With all the small fry out of the way, we can now fly down towards Aero Zero on my Coridon. Then we make our way down until we reach the lab where Professor Sada is waiting. She takes us down to the deepest part of Aero Zero, which is where we can have the final showdown. Professor Sada brings in her Slitherwing, and a flame charge from Felix was almost enough to get the KO on this abomination. But it does survive and hits us back with a low sweep, which hurts and brings my speed back down. Felix then stays in going for a second flame charge, getting the KO and raising his speed back up. Brupanet drops down and a flame charge does just over half health while an earth power brings Felix into the red. This time we go for a drain punch, which we probably should have used the first time, securing the kill and recovering some HP back. Sandy Shocks would normally outspeed, but because of the previous flame charges, it doesn't and an earthquake crushes it. Not sure I can one shot the flutter main, Sylveon tags in and takes a power gem well. Then Tom can land a couple of super effective shadow balls, eliminating the mutant Mistrevious. Screamtail is next to come in and I instantly switch GG to the field, getting the Intimidate off and taking a play rough. Three spikes later from Gigi can zap the Screamtail unconscious, leaving AI Sada with just one more Paradox Pokemon, Roaring Moon. Expecting an Earthquake, Garfield can switch in and take the hit well. The plan was to U-turn out of there, but to my surprise, Roaring Moon actually outspeeds and can murder Garfield with a Dragon Claw. I bring in Nala, who does actually outspeed, but a Hyper Voice does minimal damage before a Stone Age gives us our second death. Felix makes his way in, who can drop its attack with Intimidate, and we get lucky as a Stone Age misses us. Felix then goes for an insane Drain Punch on the Paradox Salamence, ending this thing's life and sending it straight back to the past. AI Sada has now been defeated, and we have beaten the game with just cats. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.